Hello underwater friends, I'm glad to be back in the dive center finally. Today we're going to talk about taking pictures with two strobes. Oh, but I gotta hurry up. Let's go to the studio. Wow, <laughs> that was cool. Okay, so today, like I said, we're going to talk about taking pictures with two strobes. First of all, why do we need to take strobes? Reason number one is that we lose color underwater. The water is absorbing the wavelength of different colors at different depths. When you start your dive, you're very shallow, but you already lose the red at three to five meters, and then you will lose orange, yellow, green, and at the end, you only have blue. So your pictures are not gonna look so nice if you don't bring light. I made a video on taking pictures with one light only, if you have one light, you can check this video. But the best is to take pictures with two lights, two strobes. Because if you lit your subject only from one side, then there will be a shadow on the other side and it won't look as well. The main issue we have when taking pictures with strobes is backscatter. Backscatter are small particles that are between the subject and the camera. And if you bring light, you're going to lit those particles and they're going to appear much more. So in this video, we're going to talk about techniques and strobe positioning to make sure that we lit the subject properly and that we don't have too many problems with backscatters. So let's first talk about taking pictures wide angle. When taking pictures wide angle for your strobe positioning, there are a few basic rules to follow. First of all, you want your strobes to be behind the lens. The reason is, if your strobes are in front of it, you may have glare that goes to the dome of your camera and that will make weird pictures. You want your lights to be on the side, one on each side, out, let's say 30 or so centimeters as an average and facing out a little bit like this the beam of the strobe is just going to join at the subject and you will have no light in front and have less problem with backscatter. The distance between the camera and your subject will depend on your subject and we'll talk about it in the different scenarios. You also want your strobes to be a little bit above the camera. The reason being, you want to reproduce the sunlight. Normally, when you're in the water, the light comes from the top only, and that's how it looks okay at the surface as well. So if you lit your subject from underneath, it's going to look very weird, like a ghost. But if you lit your subject more from the top, one side or in the middle, it will look kind of okay. So that's why it's important to lit your subject from above. When taking pictures of big animals, manta rays, sharks, and whatever big animal you can have, even a diver, you want to put your strobes further out from the camera. Because your subject is big, it's probably further away, so the distance between you and the subject will be longer. So if your strobes are further out, then you will have no problem with backscatter. When doing so, you want the angle of the strobe to be a little bit less. So you want your strobe to be almost facing straight and further out. If you want to do close focus wide angle, meaning you have a foreground first, like a fish, a diver, um, coral or anything like this, then you want your strobe to be closer to your camera. The reason being, you want to lit your foreground that is close to you, but you don't want to lit the background so much. Actually, your settings will be according to the blue of the water, so of the background, and you're going to lit the foreground, and like this you're going to have a nice contrast between a lit foreground and a background that is not too lit. Of course, when doing so, you're going to have to have an angle that is wider 
So you're going to have your strobes facing out more because the distance being shorter. Otherwise, you will have too much backscatter. Another kind of picture that you can take wide angle is portraits. Portraits very often is also related to close focus wide angle or big animal. But you will have to think about the strobe positioning. Because your camera is going to be on the other side, you still want your strobe to be left and right and not up and down. So you're going to have to adjust with your arms and have your strobes on both sides of your camera. That's the main difference. For basic macro, it's about the same setting as basic wide angle. You want your strobes to be on each side of the camera at a distance of, let's say, 30 centimeters, facing out like this. The edge of the beam is going to join at the animal above the camera, like we said, to reproduce the sunlight like this. You won't have problem with backscatter and your subject is going to be lit properly. Once again, you will need also your strobes to be behind the camera. If you want to do close macro, you may have another problem, which is going to be to lit your subject because it's going to be too close. So if your cameras are on the side, the lens of the camera, of the housing and everything may make it very difficult. So in that case, you will want to have your strobes in front of the camera and pretty much facing each other. So like this, the light is going to arrive on the subject and it's going to be lit properly. Yes, we will have, of course, light in the water current between the subject and the camera. But because we're talking small distance, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Of course, make sure that you don't move sand or anything when you take your pictures. Otherwise, it's going to be horrible. But if you just have a clear water for 10 centimeters or so, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so strobes in front facing each other and like this, the light is going to go on your subject. The same technique will apply when you do super macro. And the reason is going to be even more because you're going to add a diopter in front of your lens. So the port is going to be longer. So if you had the strobes behind and from the side, it wouldn't work. In that case, it's going to be very important to have your strobes further in and facing each other. Final technique that we want to have is to try to get black water background. I made a video about it if you want to check it out. But the basic rule is that you want to have your strobes facing inwards. So even more than close macro, you're going to have your strobes on each side of the subject and facing the camera. And in this case, you will just want the out edge of the light to be touching the animal. That way you will have no light arriving behind your subject. And even if there is a background, it won't be lit. So it will make a black background and a nice colorful subject. For portrait, the same technique will apply then for wide angle. Because you turn your camera, you don't want your strobes to be above and under. So you're going to put your strobes on each side of the camera. So you're going to have to readjust the whole positioning of your strobes. But at the end, you will have either the strobes facing each other if it's a closed subject or behind the camera and facing out if it's a subject that is a little bit further. No difference. So just make sure that you can articulate your arms properly and then you will be fine. Taking pictures underwater is a cool thing to do. But don't damage the environment and don't bother the animals for it. You don't want to touch anything. You don't want to break corals. You don't want to scare animals. It's very important. Our goal is to try to do it forever. So if we are nice with the environment, then we'll have a good environment for us and we'll be able to take pictures for a very long time. Another very important thing is safety. Make sure that you check your instruments pressure gauge, dive computer, dive buddy. Okay, your dive buddy is not an instrument, but check on him as well. Especially if you're two photographers, 
Make sure that you're not too far from him. Make sure that everything stays safe. And then you will enjoy your dive. In this video, I gave you some rules, but rules are meant to be broken. You saw before that lighting from underneath is not right. Well, it can be good. If you're taking a shark, for example, that have a very nice white bottom, it can be interesting and give it more contrast. It's one of the rare cases like this, but it's possible. Though there are basic rules that if you follow them are going to make your pictures nicer in general. But even if you practice on land, when you arrive on the water, it may not appear the way you expect. It doesn't mean that you need to rush. It's very important to take your time. Take a couple of pictures, review your pictures, figure out what's right, what's wrong, and then improve, change your strobe position a little bit, make sure that you adjust it right. And making a few changes will probably improve your pictures a lot. So yes, I know we have a limited time underwater, but it doesn't mean you need to rush for nothing. Take your time, think, and adjust. And that's going to be the best way you can do. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Always makes me very happy. If you're interested in editing, I'm planning on doing a new series on DaVinci Resolve. I started to use this application lately and it's great. I was on Premiere for more than 10 years. I had some final cuts a little bit in between because I wanted to try. But DaVinci Resolve is very interesting. So very shortly, I'm going to start a new series where I will show you all of the basics from the beginning to the end of an underwater video. So I will show you how to import, how to cut, how to color correct and everything. Leave me in the comment below if you're interested in it. If you want to see more content like this, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. And you can check also the two videos that appear. They will be related. Bye bye. See you next time.